we go over there? Where do we have to go? It can't be far. Damn it, we need to get out before we end up like everyone else. Give us cover. We're almost there. I'm so sorry about what happened to your friend. What the hell? Who are these people? What do they want? They are searching for this chamber. What? Why? There's nothing here. On the contrary. Everything is here. We stand before a gateway behind which the greatest treasure of all mankind is concealed. What do you mean? This monastery guards a secret that is centuries old, but the world is not yet prepared for its revelation. I tell you this only because you will shortly become the last person who can prevent the key to the secret from falling into the hands of those barbarians. What is that? This is a key. At some point, they will find this chamber and break down the door. The key must no longer be here when that happens. Take it, use it, and get it to the other side. Then you will understand everything. We just wanted to help. Now I'm the last one left alive, and I don't even know who's trying to kill me, or for that matter, why. Ancient secrets, apparently. A great treasure hidden here in this chamber. Maybe that's what they're after. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I need to get out and get in touch with England. great many strange symbols, not one of which I understand even remotely. It fits into the recess here. I haven't the slightest idea what that might do, but according to the monk, it's the only way out of here. I hope he was right. Well, Lieutenant, how are things progressing? All resistance has been quashed. The monastery is under our control. And the chamber? Uh, we haven't found it yet. There must be a secret passage. That is how the monk and the Tommy got out. At least, that is what our prisoner claims. And has he told us in the meantime what his unit was doing here? Yes, he was most talkative. They were here to map the region. Apparently, his lieutenant was using maps made by some Hong Kong cartographer who came this way before. Aha. Uh -huh. Coincidence is a strange thing. Well, we managed to contain things this time, but I don't want any further interruptions. 
We will extend our patrols, and I have ordered that the airspace be monitored by our fighters. You are a soldier. You are happy to wait and fight. I, on the other hand, am a scientist, and I believe in preventing the fight in the first place. Send someone to Hong Kong immediately. Eliminate the cartographer once and for all, and destroy any records he may have. If needs be, pay some triads from Hong Kong to take care of the job. We need to deal with this quickly. We must do everything possible to prevent anyone from turning up here again and interrupting the operation. This mission is too significant, and we have just about reached our goal, Lieutenant. The future of the Third Reich is in our hands. business, Shen? Can't complain? How about you? <laughs> Still moving stuff you shouldn't be. Have you ever tried turning a profit the honest way? It's tough. I've got bills to pay. Besides, snatching a deal from the tongs is all the fun I get around here. Fenton, Fenton. The tongs are not to be played with. These are serious people. <laughs> Shen, I didn't know you cared. I'd be surprised if Tong even knew who I was. Oh, really? He was here looking for you last night. Finally! The celebrity status I've always craved. You need to relax, old friend. Fenton, you are my best customer, and for that reason alone, I'm going to give you some good advice. Watch yourself, or you'll be at the bottom of the harbour before I can say rum. And you can say rum pretty damn quickly. Not as quickly as you can drink it. Didn't you learn in the forces not to underestimate your enemies? Christ, you make it sound like we're in a fight to the death. That may yet prove to be the case. I strongly suggest you forget smuggling and get your kicks elsewhere. Okay, okay, I'll be careful. Promise. Speaking of getting my kicks, you guys have a new singer. Yes, but you're not getting your kicks with her either. She's not into men like you. A lot of guys have tried, a lot of guys have failed. Shen, that sounds like a challenge. I'll spring you my best whiskey if you get so much as a room number. Shen, I'll be back in two minutes. You'd better get down to the basement and dig out that bottle. piece of cake. In two minutes flat, not only will I have a hot date, but an excellent bottle of whiskey to go with it. Life is sweet. Wow. I'm looking at that dress wondering if it's the feathers that make the bird, or the other way around. Either way, you look hot. I'll take that as a compliment even if it's a dubious one. Dubious or not, the question remains. Perhaps we need to get to know each other a little before we answer it. Oh, just out of interest, is that a tulip or a rose in your hair? It's a lily. Not big on treating a girl with flowers, huh? I can see why you're single. Ah, 
Is that where I've been going wrong? I always thought women preferred diamonds. Although the ones you're wearing are far outclassed by the beautiful wrist they're wrapped around. A gift from a doting admirer? Perhaps. Okay, so we know where you stand on flowers and precious stones. But let's talk about that dress. Then maybe move on to its contents. <laughs> let's postpone that for now. <laughs> You're persistent, aren't you? Okay. Why don't you come see me after I'm done? I have a room here at the club. Damn it. Those guys are from the Tong Triad. Looks like Shen was right. They really are pissed off. Uh, are those men looking for you? Kind of, yeah. And I'd prefer they didn't find me. Well... I'd hate to have to hold our rendezvous in the hospital. Take the back door. I'll distract them. Time to say goodbye. Dead end, Paddock. My answer makes no difference anyway. You're still going to beat me up, aren't you? Right, kid. This time you're messing with the wrong people. Wake up, Paddock, or you will miss your last flight. Ever done a splash down? I'll laugh later. Now let me out. You don't get it, do you? You know what? I think I literally just got it just now. I'm thinking the whole business expansion thing wasn't such a good idea after all. Indeed. But we have run out of patience. You should have kept out of our business. But you just wouldn't heed our warnings. Hey guys, why don't we just relax and talk about this? I promise I won't get in your way anymore, okay? Too late, Paddock. And once again, we find truth in an old Chinese saying. It is easy to open a business, but it is difficult to keep it running. <laughs> But we don't want to be that heartless. We won't grant you a last wish, but you may decide how you would like to die. Would you prefer to suffocate or drown? You don't have to decide right away, Paddock. Let me explain. Strictly speaking, your little submarine here is completely watertight. So when we throw you into the harbor in a minute, not a single drop of water will make its way inside. You'll then have about 15 minutes of air. An agonizing amount of time when you're waiting for death. Only fear and panic will accompany you during your final struggle. You wouldn't even wish that on your worst enemy. Therefore, we have drilled a hole in the lid for you. At first, you will instinctively try to plug the hole with your hand. But if you desist, you can end your suffering that much faster. Let the water flow in and everything will be over in one, maybe two minutes. No, do not thank us, old friend. I think we owe you that much. I agree. Bon voyage, old friend. He won't be causing us any more trouble. Crap. 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 I need a solution. Quick. Crap. If only it were that easy. The lid's nailed shut. It's hardened. 
I'm not going to get it off like this. There's a big lump of tar here. It's hardened. I'm not going to get it off like this. I'll put the lighter down for a moment. Fine. The tar in the napkin make a nice little clump. Let's see if there's anything useful inside. Okay, that should work. If I manage to put the hinge between the lid and the crate, I might be able to pry it open. Let's try. Good. They didn't stay to watch the show. Usually a time like this is a time for cautious celebration, followed by raucous celebration. Unfortunately, wandering back into triad territory for a drink with Shen is most likely inadvisable. Plus, I'm soaked. Home time, I think. Are you Tong? Moon Tong? How dare you, stranger? What do you want? Can we go somewhere and talk undisturbed, Mr. Tong? Somewhere less... lively? We have nothing to fear here. This is our district. If you have something to say, say it. If not, get out of here. Very well. I need some men to do a job for me. Discreetly and efficiently. I was told you would be able to help me. Interesting. We shall see whether I can or cannot once you've told me what this is about. My clients are looking for a man who is supposed to be living here in Hong Kong. He's in possession of something that my clients desire for themselves. And who are your clients? That is not important. Find the person and retrieve the item. That's the job. Well, many people live in Hong Kong. And I'm sure a lot of them are in possession of things that other people want. If you accept this job, you will of course receive more detailed information. Hmm, this sort of work doesn't come cheap, you understand. Money is no issue. My clients have the necessary means. All that matters is that the job is completed to our satisfaction. Then I'd say it's a deal. Ah, Paddock, you're finally here. Huxley, this is a pretty miserable place to live, Paddock. Shouldn't war heroes be spending their retirement in more comfortable surroundings? Oh, I forgot. You were dishonorably discharged. Thanks for the reminder. What are you doing here? The governor ordered me to find you. Wasn't so easy, since I hadn't the slightest idea how deep in the gutter I'd have to dig. 
You certainly smell like you belong here. Well, you of all people should know your way around the gutter, Huxley. Watch your mouth, Paddock. There may come a time when the governor won't be there to protect you and I'll be able to drag you to the penitentiary where you belong. Oh, spare me. I'm a civilian now. Deal with it. I was court-martialed and have received my deserved punishment. So leave Lord Weston out of this. You are responsible for the most severe riots in the history of this colony. The Empire conceded a lot in order to regain control. In disobeying your orders, you caused damage that we still feel the consequences of today. The Chai Wang Penitentiary would be a more appropriate punishment, if you ask me. Just let me know when you're done complaining so I can tune back in. Lord Weston wishes to speak to you immediately. Make sure you get rid of that awful stench. I'll wait in the car. Hmm. What would the governor want? If he sent none other than his adjutant to look for me, it must be important. Better not keep him waiting. Lord Weston's always been good to me. I owe him a lot. Fenton, I'm glad to see you. I hope you'll forgive the short notice. Lord Weston, please, I'm honoured. You have, however, piqued my interest. What's so urgent? Need a first-class flight to London? I'm afraid not, Fenton. I am in a somewhat awkward situation, and I think you might be able to help me. You are, in fact, my only hope. Sounds dramatic. Tell me more. The situation is as follows. As you know, the Chinese have been threatening to annex Tibet for years. I'm broadly familiar, yes. Well, the Empire's official position is not to get involved, should a conflict arise. And what exactly is the Empire's unofficial position, Governor? Come, Fenton. One should be prepared for all eventualities. I see. Military intervention? No, no, certainly not. We simply wish to be prepared. In the unlikely event that a military conflict arise, and that is why we need to know the lay of the land. No maps of Tibet are currently available. It is, officially, completely uncharted. And what does all this have to do with me? I'm not much of a cartographer. You have enough of your own. Quite right, Fenton. We have, in fact, already sent out an expedition. Entirely off the record, you understand? The Chinese must be kept in the dark. The last thing we need right now are diplomatic complications. The problem is, the expedition disappeared without a trace a few days ago. We haven't the slightest idea what their status might be. You've sent a rescue party? Two. Both returned. Empty-handed. No trace of them. Not a clue. So now what? I can no longer rely on military options. Eventually, the Chinese will get wind of the situation. The matter must be handled with discretion. Fenton, I want you to find our men. Well, I'm certainly flattered. But what makes you think I'd do the job any better? You said yourself, you've got no maps. And I'm far from a local expert. Come, Fenton, you had quite the reputation. You've completed, successfully, numerous missions of this nature. I, for one, have the greatest confidence in you. Honoured, I'm sure, Lord Weston. But like you said, I had a reputation. I don't regret my time with the forces. But those days are over now. When they needed a scapegoat for the winter riots, I stood my ground, dishonorably discharged. So tell me, why should I lift so much as a finger for the Empire now? I realize that, Fenton, and I predicted this response. But you should know, this is about the people, not just the army. With all due respect, sir, appealing to my sense of compassion won't work. Oh, stop being so hard on me. You'll get all the financial support you need, and... Perhaps I can assist you in settling your little difficulties with the local competition. Tempting, but no thanks, Governor. Any other matter, I'd be happy to help. But there's a file in my life labelled Army, and it's closed. But what if the situation weren't so cut and dried? Enlighten me. 
Richard Fenton. Richard was the expedition leader. Richard! You wait till now to tell me that! Fenton, I am the governor, and Richard is an officer. That he is my son shouldn't affect the performance of my duties. That may well be, but it can damn well affect mine. You know how close Richard and I were at the academy. I have a right to know what's going on, don't you agree? You are right. I know how much Richard means to you. How couldn't I? After everything you've been through. Good. So tell me what I need to know. I'm leaving now. You'll find all the information I've been able to collect in this dossier. Thank you, Phantom. I will never forget what you've done for me. Thank me when I found him. Taxi! Richard, what have you gotten yourself into? I've known you for most of my life, and I've never seen the old man so worried about you. I can understand why as well. No contact for over ten days. Disappeared without a trace 400 miles east of Lassa, in a completely unexplored region the size of England. What the hell happened? Avalanche? Snowstorm? That part of Tibet may as well be the end of the world. I need to stay focused. Stay rational, no matter how hard it is. Can't let my feelings get the better of me. First off, I need some local maps. Unfortunately, the region's never been officially charted. I need Gus to start working double time on the plane so I can get going. Maybe he can find me some maps as well. Might be he knows some pilots who have been out that far. Hey, Gus. Listen, we're going to have to cancel all upcoming jobs. What's wrong, boss? Are you in some kind of trouble? You could say so. I'm going to Tibet. Tibet? What do you want to do in Tibet? Don't say this personally, but I can't talk about it. Actually, you're not even supposed to know I'm flying. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, if it's none of my business in the first place, I'll just carry on slaving away like nothing happened. I told you, it's nothing personal. I need some maps of Tibet. Maybe you can help me. I realize it's pretty much unexplored, but there must be something out there I can use. Do you know anyone who knows his way around the country? Hmm. Most pilots around here head south. You could try old Wang. Hey, yeah, he mentioned it once or twice. Once or twice? He never stops talking about his time over there. And he reckons he's mapped a great chunk of the place. Hmm. Can't you think of anyone else? Oh, yeah, of course. I know hundreds of people with maps of Tibet just lying around at home. What's the matter with you? Still having a hissy fit over that fight you two had? I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't have a clue what went down with you two, or why Yen quit working here all of a sudden. Nobody tells me anything. But if your quest is so important, I suppose you'll just have to talk to him. Okay, okay. I guess I don't have much choice. Exactly. So, you two haven't seen each other since then? No. And his little niece, uh, what's her name again? Kim. Oh yes, Kim. So, you aren't in touch with her either? No. Why, should I be? I just had an inkling. You spent all that time over there when you were younger. You were practically part of the family. And, well, are you saying she wasn't your type? Nonsense. No idea what she's been up to. You know anything new? Well, I did run into Wang at the club. Talked about the old days a bit. I think he misses flying, but he'd never admit it. He's retired now. He still lives in that old house on Victoria Road. He moved. Don't ask me where to. He never said and I never asked. Great. And how am I supposed to find him? Maybe Shen in the bar can help you out. He makes it his business to know about the punters. Good idea. I'll drop by to see him. How's the engine coming along? I'm almost finished, but there's four screws left over, which is a bit strange. But I'll find somewhere to put them. I hope you're joking. When you're finished, bring my equipment on board and get that bird ready to fly. I want to leave for Tibet tonight. Aye, sir. That's all for now, Gus. See you later. See you later, boss. Maybe I should ask Gus if he needs them first. Gus, listen. Yes? Do you think you could spare your bellows for a while? Why do you ask? What do you need them for? 
Well, I can't really say at the moment. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, go ahead. It's your stuff anyway. I've finished cleaning the engine. Well then. I have to be careful. I'd like to avoid meeting the triads again. I better make sure the coast is clear. Okay, Tom and his men are hanging around outside the club, so there's at least a slim chance there's no one inside. Good enough for me. I'd better ask Shen for Yen Wang's address. Hello, Shen. I thought they already caught you. They did. Can you believe it? They actually tried to drown me in the harbour. I thought that was just something they said to scare people. Why am I not surprised? I know, I know. And, nevertheless, your best customer stands before you in the finest physical condition. You're really asking for it, aren't you? They're still keeping an eye on the front door. I've noticed. But I need your help, Shen. Tell me, what's going on? Do you happen to remember my old friend Wang? He used to work for me. Yen Huang? Of course I remember him. Word has it he moved. Do you know where he lives now? No idea. Sorry. Damn it. Everybody knows Wang. Nobody knows where he lives. Wait, if you're lucky, Nian Su might be able to help. He's not the youngest or the most switched on anymore. But they say he knows half of Hong Kong. And where can I find this Nian Su? Uh, sitting at the table over there, he's on the rice wine. Thanks for not snitching on me to Mang Tong. Like I said, I'd hate to lose my best customer. See you later, Shen. Yes, good luck. Excuse me, may I disturb you for a moment? What do you want, young friend? Wait, aren't you the pilot, uh, Pelok, uh, Parok, uh... Paddock. Fenton Paddock. Yes, that's what I said. So the barkeeper said you know half of Hong Kong. So far, that's holding true. He says that, does he? Well, maybe. I'm looking for a friend who used to live in this district a couple of years ago. He's called Yen Wang. Unfortunately, we lost touch, and now I urgently need his help. Have you heard of him? Maybe you know where I can find him. Um, what was he called again? Wang. Yen Wang. Wang. Hmm. Wang. Ah, well, son, I am not so good with names anymore. He lived in this district, you say? Yes, two years ago. He was a cartographer. Hmm. A cartographer? I am not sure. Pity. I hoped. Easy! Easy! Names are for tombstones. But I never forget a face. What does he look like? Do you have a picture of him? Show me his photo and maybe I can help. A photo? All right. Wait for me here. I think I have a photo of Wang somewhere in the office. Is it just Hong Kong you're the expert on, or do you also happen to be acquainted with other distant regions? Like, I don't know, Tibet, for example? Are you making fun of me, son? Not at all, sir. I'm trying to collect as much information on Tibet as possible, and you seemed like a well-travelled man. <laughs> I have never left Hong Kong for a day in my life. And to be honest, I have no intention of doing so. Traveling always leads to trouble. 
You get where you're going, but you cannot find what you're looking for. Seems it's somewhere else now. So you go there, but there's a problem. Then, while you're off in the back end of nowhere, everything explodes back home. If you ask me, you're better off not going anywhere. You don't find trouble if you don't look for it. Sage advice. What if I like trouble? Ah, then forget what I said. Every man must learn for himself. See you later. Okay, now where might I have a photo of Yen Wang? Who knows what that might come in handy for? Something, I'm sure. I rarely use it anyway. Ah, the key's stuck to the back. There might actually be a photo of Yen Wang in his personnel file in the safe. You'd think I'd know the code, right? Well, I hardly ever use this old thing, so I don't. It's on a note in my wallet. Hey, what? Where? My wallet's gone. Damn it. I must have lost it in the harbour. I suppose I'd better go back there. If I'm lucky, I might be able to fish my wallet out of the water without running into Tong and his men. Hey, that's my wallet that kid fished out of the water. Wait a second, kiddo. That's not public property. It's mine. What? Yeah, right. Anyone could say that. How stupid do you think I am, big guy? No, honestly. It really is my wallet. So? So? So I want it back. But I found it. And how am I supposed to know it's really yours? My word is my bond. Now hand it over. No. And if you take it away from me, I start screaming. Go on then. Scream yourself hoarse. Hmm. Those triad types might still be hanging around. Maybe I'm better off without unnecessary attention. Okay, kid. Look, that wallet is very important to me. I really need it back. Not my problem. Cheeky little bastard. Fine. He's only a kid. I can play along. Will you tell me your name? Only if you tell me yours. Well, I'm Fenton. I'm Hal. Okay, Hal. Do you want a reward for finding my wallet? You can have all the coins that are in it. No. Then what do you want? Help me catch a bat. Come again? Catch a bat? Yes. You're fishing for bats? Don't be stupid. I'm only killing time until the bats come out. There are tons of them over there in the warehouse. And you want a bat because... I bet my friends I could catch one. But you can't. Sure I can. Well, usually, but it's raining today. So? You don't know much about bats, do you? The rain drives away the insects. And if there aren't any insects around, then there's nothing for the bats to eat. And if there's nothing to eat, the bats won't come out. All right. No, it's not all right. If I don't catch a bat, they'll think I lied. And that's why you'll keep that big mouth of yours shut next time. And this is the persuasive charm you use on people when they've got something you want? Fine. I'll get you your bat, you give me my wallet. Sure, it's a deal. Fine. If I want my wallet back, I guess I need a bat. I'll be off then. Was never much of a gardener myself contrary to British stereotype. A tree cut precisely to shape. Typical British approach. We even impose our formalities on nature. 
Wait a moment. Is that a ball hanging in the branches? Hold! Stop! Stay where you are, sir! What do you think you're doing? I, uh, want to get that ball over there. My, uh, nephew accidentally threw it into the tree while he was playing this morning. I'm sorry, sir, but I cannot allow you to do that. What? I just want to go get my nephew's toy. That may very well be, and usually it wouldn't be a problem, sir. But today it's been raining, and you are just about to step on this decorative English lawn. So what? So what? Excuse me, but have you taken leave of your senses, sir? The constant rain has soaked the ground completely, and the precious blades of grass are defenceless against your brutal boots. OK, then. I'll be very careful when I walk across the lawn. I promise. Halt! If you take even one more step towards the border, I will have to arrest you, sir. Now wait just a minute. There's a million different crimes going on right now in this city. Your lawn will be just fine. Sir, I do not joke. When it comes to the protection and care of His Majesty's parks, I have full authority. After all, we represent the British Crown here. What is to become of the Empire if we are not even capable of establishing well-tended gardens in our colonies? Sir, you are preventing me from doing my duty. Either you step back, or I will be forced to take you into custody. It seems I am powerless against British conscientiousness. I can't even tell him why I'm here. I need a different plan. OK, I'll wind up the clock. Running like... clockwork. It'll go off in a couple of minutes. OK, I'll place the alarm clock in the rubbish bin. Let's see what happens when it goes off. When the alarm goes off, I'd better not be here. What's that? Who's disturbing the governor's sleep? Well, can you believe that? Why would someone throw away a perfectly good alarm clock? Great. That should distract him from his duties for a while. And now off the lawn as quickly as possible. As a world-class pilot, I do, of course, have adequate response time to catch a fly one-handed. I prefer not to show off, though. I must be a damn genius. If I tie the measuring tape to the ball, I'll have a lovely, colourful pendulum. Hey, things like this always seem to come in handy. Why should I do that? I went through a lot of trouble to get that ball, and I'm not going to hang it up here for no good reason. I need to avoid making too much noise. Don't need those goons to turn up. That definitely means avoiding breaking large wooden rods. Why should I do that? I went through a lot of trouble to get that. A thin wooden rod. Dirty flies. They must like this dry patch under the roof. What was that?
just a magic cat. That was close. I shouldn't make so much noise. Okay, you little rascal. Let's see if your animal intelligence is any match for my person intelligence. Aha. Take that, nature. Worth a try. I should be able to suck up a few flies. My god, Fenton Paddock. Legendary adventurer, pilot extraordinaire, flycatcher. Is that a step down? Fly, my pretties. It's working. The flies are buzzing round the lamp. Hey! What are you doing there? You said you wanted flies. I've got some. And that's supposed to work? Yeah. The flies lure the bats, and you catch one. I don't know. At the least, it'll give you a fighting chance. I'd say I've kept my part of the deal. Hmm. Okay then. Here's your wallet. There wasn't anything valuable in there anyway. Well, I, I was having some financial issues, you know, and... Hey, it's none of your business. Give it to me. Good luck on your bat hunt. Thanks. I think I'll check nothing's missing. What I'm about to say is actually pretty sad. Nothing's missing. Hey, boss. What's up, Gus? She's just about ready. I've stowed your equipment and some provisions. Whatever would I do without you, Gus? Well, keep that in mind next time you fill in my paycheck. Anyway, good luck, boss. You'll need it. Thanks, Gus. So I guess I'll get going in a couple of minutes if there's nothing else. All right. Take a few days off and enjoy them. If I'm not back in three weeks, then I suppose you'll have to look for a new job. I'm sure it won't come to that. Yes, my safe combination. I really should memorize this thing. documents and personnel files. There must be a photo of Yen Wang in here somewhere. Hmm. These are the documents and certificates from my days in the army. A newspaper article on the 1932 Harbour Riots. It says, eight dead during riots in Hong Kong Harbour. Chinese dock workers came together on Friday evening in the Victoria Harbour to vent their anger over low wages. A British army unit was dispatched to the harbour to keep the peace. As the situation was about to escalate, the officer in command was ordered to retreat in order to prevent casualties. For reasons unknown, the officer in command did not comply with these orders. His soldiers opened fire and began to shoot randomly into the enraged mob. This incident caused a public outcry and was followed by several other clashes. Thankfully, there were no further casualties. The British government regrets the incident and has relented to the workers' demands. The officer responsible for the bloody conflict has been suspended from his duties for the time being. It is very likely that he will have to face charges of insubordination before a military court. Why on earth did I keep this crap? Here we go. Yen Wang's personnel file. Complete with photo. Now, hopefully, Niansu can tell me Yen Wang's current address. It took longer than expected, but I have the photo. Um, what uh, photo are you talking about? The photo of my friend. You told me to bring it. Me? Do I know you, young man? Ah, oh, wait. You're that pilot boy, right? I don't believe it. Are you for real? <laughs> Take it easy, son. You must forgive this old man his jokes. 
Come along. Show me the photo. Ah, oh, yes. I know this man. And do you know where he lives? I said I'd tell you all you wanted to know. He has moved to the Won Moy district. And if I remember correctly, he lives in Wing Hao Street. Finally. Thanks a lot. That was all? Yes, that's all. You have been a great help. Perhaps I can return the favour someday. Hmm. Be seeing you, Paslo. Right. This must be Yen Wang's place. It's been a while. God knows how he'll react. Let's see if I can find Yen Wang's apartment. I can't pull it out. Okay, this must be the one. Fenton? Kim? Um, I, I didn't think... Why don't you come on in? Uh, thanks. How do you know... Oh, it wasn't easy. A strange old man told me. But first he needed a photo of your uncle. Then he pretended to forget who I was and... I don't get it. It's a much longer story than it should be. Anyway, I, I know it's been a while, but is Yen here? You don't know? Don't know what? What do you want? Well, I wanted to see your uncle. Why? Are you in interrogations now? I want to talk to him. Why now? Why didn't you come any earlier? He waited for you for so long. Did he? Well, better late than never. Not this time, Fenton. Uncle Wang passed away a few days ago. No. He did. Very suddenly. I can't. I'm so sorry, Kim. What are you sorry about? That you betrayed him and refused to talk to him for over a year? I'm sorry that your uncle passed away, but I never betrayed his trust. No? So what do you call it? What you did was terrible. And the fact that you never told us about it, that we actually had to find out about it from someone else. Don't you call that betrayal? You worked together, you were friends. We were practically family. How did we get you so wrong, Fenton? You hear lies and conjecture. You see words in the paper and you just assume the worst without even talking to me. You call that friendship? My uncle wanted to talk to you, but you just left him standing there. You didn't explain any of it. So we're left with eight Chinese workers shot dead that evening and a missing man. What else were we supposed to believe? You never denied any of it. You'd already made up your minds. Your uncle packed up and left work before I had a chance. Those are just excuses. You knew where we were. You could have come. Either there was nothing to explain, or we just weren't worth the effort. Kim, that's not true. I can't believe you could even think that. You were supposed to know me. You know I'm not capable of... a massacre. I thought I knew you. I also thought we could talk about anything and everything. We... I... I just can't talk about that one thing. Then why are you here? I... I wanted to ask Yen a favour. What kind of favour? For the notes from his expedition to Tibet. That's the only reason? Yes. I see. Why do you need the notes? I... I can't tell you that either. Oh, of course. Who do you think you are, Fenton Paddock? You should leave now. Kim, please. These maps are extremely important to me. Oh, really? Then tell me why. If you expect me to trust you, then you'll have to trust me too. Otherwise, get out of my sight. Kim, I don't want to drag you into this. <laughs> Hello, honey. Ho oh, ho, looks like I disturbed your little rendezvous. Honey? Who are you calling honey? Shut up and listen, girl. I want the maps. The ones Wang sketched on his way through Tibet. Which maps? My uncle never went to Tibet. Stop wasting my time, girl, or I will lose my temper. I want every single note he brought back from Tibet. 
and hurry up, or I will have to motivate you. Come on, hand them over! You okay? What does it look like? Who is that? Mun Tong. A triad boss. Here, take his pistol and keep an eye on him. I'll go look around outside. His crew are rarely far away. Hmm. Looks like Tong's got his men covering the front door. Like I thought. Two of them outside the door. Why is everyone suddenly so interested in those maps? What do you mean? But just before my uncle passed away, Richard showed up here, then you, and now those men. I want to know what's going on here. Richard? Did Yen show him the maps? Yes. That was about three weeks ago. And? Did Richard take the maps with him? No. Uncle Wang made copies for him. So the originals are still here? Yes. Uncle made me promise to keep them safe. Okay, look, I'll explain everything later. But we need to get out of here, quickly. These guys aren't going to give up. What is so special about the maps? No idea. And you expect me to believe that? No, I expect you to trust me. You'll explain everything? Yes, I promise. Okay. Last chance, Paddock. Thanks, Kimmy. Don't push it. Now what? We have to get out of the house. Is there a back door? I don't think so. I've only been here a couple of times, though. Okay, don't worry. I'll come up with something. We'll be out of here in a jiffy.